what does unschooling actually look like? If you are a parent to a young child and you're thinking about unschooling, the chances are quite high that right now you don't really have a sense of what unschooling looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. This is because you probably weren't unschooled. You were probably sent off to school for many hours every day for like the majority of your childhood. And the chances are you haven't quite yet connected in with your crew of people or your support team. So you don't actually have some examples of what the unschooling world, what the texture of it is like, how it feels, how it smells, ma. And so I'm just going to give you a little bit of a glimpse into that as best I can, bearing in mind that we are us and you are you and your day to day will 100% represent you and your kids and your needs and what you like to do and what they like to do and whether you're morning people or night people <laughs> and that is the beautiful thing about unschooling is that you create your environment you cultivate your day in order to maximize connection and joy and presence it's pretty wicked so I have a list of things as always so this is for young kids right and also in this video I'm gonna answer the question how do I get things done you know like where does that stuff happen in the day the things I need to just do as a mama or a parent first of all it looks like play play all day and this is a super easy thing to get behind because all of the literature about how children learn says that play is the building block of a child's learning play fires up all the synapses as well as putting your child into extreme flow zone which is the perfect state for the human to be in where the joy just flows and the connections are high and the brain is just like genius zone so depending on your child uh, they'll be happy just playing in the garden playing imagination games they might have an imaginary friend or they might need kids to play with which is definitely complicated right now in this era but hopefully you've got one or two pals that you can connect in with and when they're really little they'll probably just be playing side by side but they'll just like the energy of having other people around as they get older if you've got a bit of a social butterfly you're gonna want to spend some good chunks of your week um, in an environment where your social butterfly can play with her buddies speaking from experience if we get enough play with pals into our week everything else just falls into place so beautifully it's all good so yeah with young kids it's gonna look like so much play you're gonna want to just be hands off let them do that and maybe give yourself a little chunk of time each day where you really get involved yourself where you um maybe put a timer on your phone so that you can dive into their play for just like 45 minutes to let them know that you're speaking their language and to just fire up that connection. Apart from that, you don't have to play with them all day. And this is when you're gonna get your things done. When you observe that they're deep in play, you're gonna be able to do the bits and pieces that you need to get done. But you're gonna have to make wise choices about that because you're not gonna be able to sit down and like do computer work or probably even sit down and have a phone call anything that is sitting down they're gonna see you sitting down and they're gonna be like yo i see you sitting i'm curious what's what's this on your computer who's on the phone <laughs> whereas if you do things while they're playing that are active like i don't know sorting something or gardening or you know physical things it's going to be a bit more of an energy match and they won't really notice you so much they won't notice that you've suddenly gone still <laughs> and you're going to be able to get your things done then so yeah be a bit of an opportunist so a little example of this from our own life was our kids uh loved bouncing on the tramp and at the time i was trying to believe that i was a gardener so i was really into gardening and so I put the tramp right next to the garden and 
originally I imagined, because I'm so into gardening, they would come and do the gardening with me and I was like, yeah, that's what unschooling looks like, as the kids gardening next to me and learning about seeds. They were three and five at the time. It didn't look like that. They didn't want to do that. So I moved the tramp right next to the garden and then they would just bounce and listen to music for hours while I was in the garden growing stuff. And so it was physical, it was active, so it kind of met their energy. But also I had to let go what I thought unschooling would look like, which is them learning from me while I do my skills and my learning. It can look like that, but it's super important that you let go of an illusion and an expectation of what you think it's gonna look like and simply let it all unfold as it happens. Just accept it. So once I could let go of like, you know, chasing them around with gardening tools, being like, yeah, sure, I don't wanna come and do this. Once I let that go, we all just lived our best life while I was in the garden and they tramp, they bounced on the trampoline. And actually now they're seven and nine and only now I've like given up gardening because I'm actually shit at it. <laughs> but they are now growing seeds. So, you know, is it, that's a big piece of unschooling is letting go what you think it should look like and just reveling in what it actually is like and really leaning into that and finding the joy and the presence in that space. It also looks a lot like conversation. So yeah, even with the two-year-old, you're gonna be answering their questions, you're gonna be asking them questions, you're gonna be sharing stories with each other. It's just gonna be a lot of talking. That's probably like the second biggest chunk of unschooling is just conversations, being open to their questions, giving them the truthful answers to things helping them connect the dots, asking them, what do you think? Or what's your theory on that? I mean, between play and conversation, that's like 80% of your child's, of your young child's unschooling day-to-day -day experience. So you're gonna plan adventures, you're gonna wake up in the morning and think, what do we wanna do today? And you might go off to like your favorite place. You might bob along and get some chores done and they'll come along with you and they'll get to meet your friends and they'll get to see what your friends do for work and talk to them about that. When you're planning your day, you're gonna make sure you get in a lot of sites of mutual fulfillment. These are places where you and your children get to drop into the flow zone where you are both getting your needs met. Though you really wanna make sure you're not getting into a pattern of only doing things that your kids love that are exhausting for you because that's super unsustainable. So each day you want to make sure you've got a nice slice of SMF so that you can kind of get a bit of a breather while your kids are super happy. Sometimes this might look like soft play, it might look like the library if your librarians are really cool and chilled out, it might look like the beach or a gated park or a friend's house where the kids play happily and you get to talk. But be really truthful about this. Is it really a place where you get your needs met? Is it a place where your kids do too? Find those places and book them into your day. It's like the cornerstone of a sustainable unschooling day. And then alongside this, so like maybe the last little percentage of your unschooling world with young, young kids, is going to just be leaving a gentle, soft gaze on their interests. So just noticing what do they love? Where is that spark in their eye? What is their favorite kind of play? And just super gently, not in a kind of overbearing way, just like opening doors on that. So if you notice that they love bubbles, learning how to make bubble mixture together and making like a giant bubble wand thing, or if you learn, that, if you notice that they love making potions, that was my kids, creating an environment where they can where you put out heaps of different ingredients and they make loads of potions. Just like with no pressure on yourself, just trusting that you can do this and that you are gonna do this. Just gently opening your arms to watching their interests evolve and creating more room for them to do that. So this is done beautifully in the book, The Spark, which I highly recommend. I love that book. I read it really early on when Ramona was only like, few months old. Her child is autistic and is given a really sad prognosis, like he's never ever going to be able to do anything for himself. 
and she, the mama, just follows her instinct to just keep gently opening the doors on his interest, which at that time when he was really little was noticing like the, the different shadows and light coming through the windows. So she set up like um, little prisms and things on the windows so he could follow that more. And basically she just spent his whole childhood doing that. And then I think he like won a Nobel Prize or something when he was like 13. So yeah, highly recommend that book, super loved it, but just a really great example of a mum just seeing her role as facilitating joyfulness in her child. So yeah, in summary, it looks like play, conversation, planning adventures and sites of mutual fulfillment, them coming along to do chores with you and do the things that you do. It really looks like keeping a gaze on their interests and opening the doors to their interests and it 100% looks like letting go of your expectations about it, what it should look like and just leaning into the isness of your day with your kids. Are you unschooling with little ones? I would love to hear what your day looks like or if you've now got older ones, let us know how you used to spend your hours with your little people. Next week we're going to look at what unschooling actually looks like with older kids. I've also got an amazing opportunity for you to join my unschooling membership program. So take a little click in the box below, you get access to Disco, my unschooling course, and the most amazing community, and three coaches and mentors. It's super amazing chance, it's like a two week experiment of opening the doors on my membership. So do take a little look and see if you want to get involved in that. Take care.